All right, first graders, today we're going to talk about something important. We're going to talk about our brain, okay? And we know how to make our brain grow, right? Yeah. How do we make our brain, brain grow? <coughs> how do we make our brain grow? By reading. Reading helps our brain grow for reading. By getting smarter. By getting smarter. How do we get smarter, though? By learning. By learning, okay. Oh, now, today yeah. we're going to talk about something, some other things that go on in our brain. And I'm going to use my hand. Some of you asked, what are those eyes for? That's what we're going to find out today, okay? I'm going to use my hand, and we're going to pretend like it's a brain. And yeah. down here, this part is going to be my downstairs brain. And this part is my upstairs. So like in a house, you know how we have the downstairs of a house? Yeah. And our school has that too. We have our downstairs that we're on, and then we have our upstairs. And I'm going to talk to you about the different things that happen in those places, okay, in our brain. So, I'm going to, let's take a look and see what's going on inside this brain. Okay, so if I open it up, you're going to see what's in there. A dog. A dog. Do you think we really have a dog in our brain? No. No, we don't have a dog in our brain, but the reason I use this is because I want you to pretend, I want you to think about, if there was a dog in your brain, what might happen when we have big feelings? Now, I'm going to tell you about it. Have you ever seen a dog get really scared? Yeah. yeah. Or really excited? Yeah. So we dogs have big dog. feelings, right? And this downstairs part of our brain is the part where our feelings are. Okay? Now all of us have feelings, right? Yeah. yeah. Moms have feelings, dads, grandmas, grandpas, kids. So this happens in all of our brains, That's not just you your brains. Die. Okay? So in our brain where the feelings are, we're going to think about a dog, and we're going to think about three things that a dog might do if they have really big feelings. Now, think about this. Have you ever seen a dog that was scared run? Run away? Yeah. Yeah, yeah my dog runs away like every day. Yeah, so when a dog gets scared, that's one thing they might do. They might run. A first grader might do that same type of thing. Okay? If you want to avoid something, you might run. Okay? The second thing that a dog might do if they had a big feeling, like maybe they were scared or startled, a dog might fight. In a dog, fighting would probably look like maybe they might bite you. Okay? Or attack you or scratch you. Now, in people, you might hear somebody yell really loud when they're in that mode. And again, it's not just little it's not just little kids that do that, right? Moms and dads might do the same thing. Right? They might yell real loud. Okay? Or or you might see somebody hit. Okay? So these are feelings. So first a dog might run or a dog might what? Fight. Fight. Yeah. And the third thing that you might see a dog do is freeze. Okay? They feel do they like... Freeze? My dog freezes There's all the time. At, like, There's in the middle of a fight with my two dogs, so they would... So, let's think about like, that, Cam. Stop. When your dog, your, so, your dog just freezes? Yeah, they, they would feel freeze maybe little helpless battle. and hopeless? Raise your hand if you've ever felt helpless and hopeless. Like, I just don't even know what to do. Miss Ma, I, have I have these feelings of I don't know what to and do. And usually they would go back then to show me. Fight. Raise your hand if you had that feeling. It would be a couple Guess seconds. what? I have those feelings too. In okay? So we all, right now it's Mrs. Moore's turn to talk, okay? And then when we're done, if you have a story or a question, then you can talk to me, okay? Okay, we're going to keep going here. Now, we all have those feelings but we need to control those feelings. So we need to try and control the dog. And that's why we have the upstairs part of our brain. So watch this. I'm going to tuck that dog in here. And I'm going to put the upstairs Brian down like this. Now this is our thinking part of our brain. And you said, why are there eyes on your finger? I did this because I want you guys to remember that the thinking part of your brain can do this. It can use eye messages. Now it's not really the eyes like this, it's talking about I, that capital I that we use in our writing. So I messages can be used to share feelings. So for example, if that if I have that 
big feeling in here, I could say, I feel mad. Can you think of another feeling thing you could say that starts with I, an I message? Becky. I feel angry. I feel happy. I feel scared. I am excited. I feel or I am excited. So you're telling, you're, you're telling how you feel, and that helps control those feelings. Okay, I'm going to ask for some more help in a minute here. Now there's another thing that you can do with those I messages. You can say I feel, or you can tell what you need. Sometimes you need something, so you might say, you might say, I need a hug. When might you need a hug? What feeling might you need a hug for, Abel? Um, if you're feeling angry or sad. Angry or sad. And you could use those What's I words, mean? too. You what could use mad? those I words. Mad, you could say, I need a hug. You might say this, I need a break. Like okay. Joey. Or, I need alone time. Okay, so those are things, remember first kids, we're not going to shout out, okay, and we're not going to shout out friends' names, we're going to raise our hand if we have something to say, okay, so those are some things that we need, okay, so when we name our feelings, we can tame our dog, tame means we can control it, so name it to tame it, that's something I want you to remember in your head, if you can name those feelings, or you can name what you need, it's going to help you control this part of your brain. Okay, using those I messages and making sure that that dog feels heard and safe and loved. So we tuck it in like this, using the thinking part of our brain with our I messages. But now I want to tell you what might happen if that dog or that feeling part of our brain is not feeling safe or not feeling loved. What can happen, I call this flipping your lid. So watch what happens. This dog in here is so worried that watch what happens. I flip my lid, okay? And do you remember the three things that could happen? One thing is that I could, what? What could the dog do? What's the first thing? Run. Run. Or fight. fight or freeze. Freeze. Okay. Or so when somebody flips scratch. their lid, you might see that happening. There's not really a dog in there, friends. There's not really a dog in there that that's happening. But can you picture that happening? Because that happens to all of us at times. And then you know what we need to do? When we feel those feelings coming on, those big feelings or strong feelings, we need to tell ourselves, I need to maybe do some of those breathing that things that we learn during morning meeting. Or maybe we need to ask for a break, I need. Or maybe we need to use our I message to say what we feel. Okay? Now, I'm going to be putting some things up in the classroom to help us remember that. On here, you will see that this is our hand reminding us what a brain looks like. And when we have our hand like this, and we're thinking, and we're doing calm choices, maybe our morning meeting breathing, we have our upstairs brain, hugging our downstairs brain. But if we have those big feelings in our downstairs brain, our upstairs brain is trying to hold them in, but if we don't take care of it by using those I messages, we flip our lid. Okay, so I'm gonna put this poster up as a reminder that when you start feeling those big feelings, take care of that little dog in your brain. I'm also going to put this up as a reminder. It shows us our upstairs brain and our downstairs brain, and we have our dog to remind us that we might have these feelings. Content, just, okay, I'm feeling good, happy, worried, afraid, excited, confused, and mad. And when our dog part of our brain or our downstairs feels that, we the want to run, fight, or freeze, because this is our feeling part. Up here in the upstairs part, it says it's a reminder to gently hug your downstairs brain and take care of it. Make sure it feels loved and safe by using I messages, by using the breathing that we've learned during morning meeting, by asking to take a break. Maybe you might need to say, I need help. Ask for help. And then the last one I put is name it to tame it. 
That means in order to take care of that dog in there, we need to name our feelings. Okay. Do you have questions for me about our brain? I do. What's your question? Oh, I can't hear our friend. Um, sometimes I feel mad and I need a um, hug from my mom and have a long time, but my sister won't just leave me alone. Okay, so some, so maybe you know what you could use? Those I messages and say, Mom, I just really need a hug. And I bet you Mom would give you a hug. Yes. Do you have a question? That means you're wondering something about what I just talked about. 